so going into it with that mindset and then the confidence of you're good at what you do. There's a reason you are where you are. You're good at that. So it's okay to be good at that. It's okay to tell the world you're good at it and offer your expertise. That's all that matters. If one person listens to it or watches it, and I always say, if you can just touch one person, you've yeah. done your job. Mm -hmm. So in bold in what you do and just making sure people know what you do, be really clear in your message. Welcome to Be Bold Branding, where we discuss the power of differentiating yourself through your own unique story and standout personal brand. It's one thing to have an amazing product or service to offer, but it's another thing to get that product or service noticed. So if you're struggling with the latter half of that, like a lot of people are, you will love our guest today. Christina Daves is a PR strategist, inventor, on-air lifestyle expert, speaker, and author. After inventing her own product and working her way into over 50 media outlets in less than a year, I know how hard that is, she became passionate about helping others understand and go from established to known. Welcome to Be Bold Branding, Christina. Hey, it's great to see you guys as always. Same here. We've known you for several years now. So Christina is a good friend of ours and we're so happy to have you back, Christina. Oh, yeah. you know, I'm so excited to share this. I know what PR can do for a business. So if we can touch just one person and get them to elevate their business with it, our work today is done. Agreed. Agreed. Because we've known you for a while and we know your story, you want to share just a quick background for the audience and let them know where you come from and yeah. why you do yeah. what you do? I actually got into this accidentally, literally. I had a freak accident. I broke my foot. I got put in one of those big, awful medical boots. And I was going to New York City, and it was just awful. So I figured New York City, I'd be able to find something to make the boot look better. And there was nothing on the market. So I invented a fashion line for medical boots. And I had owned a retail store, so I'm like, oh, I've got this. This is going to be so easy. What I didn't realize was that I had created a whole new space in the marketplace, and I had hired a coach very poorly, not a nice person who took a lot of money from me and didn't do any work. So I was kind of stuck, but now looking back, that stuckness is what made me really successful in the space because I had to figure it out. We had mortgaged our house. I had all this inventory, and I didn't know how to tell the world I existed, so I figured out publicity and I got really good at it. And I figured out a formula that I was knock on wood now, like, I don't know, 11 years later is foolproof. If you do it and you follow the system, it works. It works for everybody. You just have to do it. And for the last 11 years, I've written two books and I speak about it and I've helped thousands of people land in the media and just get massive visibility and go, as you said, from established like they're established professionals, but nobody knows about them. They're the world's best kept secret. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just realized, you know, we started our businesses around the same time. Brandface was born around 11 years ago, too. Yeah. So it's a journey. It's been a really fun one. Well, okay. So you developed this product and you kind of crossed your own hurdles with it, figured out how to do it. And now you partner with some pretty big brands to help them get their products noticed too. It's not just people that are established but not yet known. It's also big brands out there. Tell us about some of those brands that you're working with and how you came to partner with them. Yeah, so I there's kind of two sides to my business. I've got the PR piece where I teach people how to do it. And then I have put myself in the position where if I'm constantly pitching the media and landing in the media, I can certainly help my clients better. So I position myself as an on-air host, a lifestyle expert, and I'm walking the walk, you know, every day. So a lot of the bigger companies were for products that, you know, I would do various product segments. I worked with Bed Bath Beyond, Home Depot, Amazon, and then, you know, worked with a lot of real estate companies. I know, gosh, there's been thousands, thousands of companies. I'm trying to think of who I've worked at or individuals, you know, it doesn't have to just be a big company. You know, that's the problem. Most people like us, we can't afford PR firms. They're not sustainable. And they're going to charge, if they're good, five to $10,000 a month. It's going to be a three to six month minimum. There's no guarantees and you've built no relationships. But if you do it and you build your media list and you learn how to do it and you build those relationships, which is exactly what I've done, 
that's how you constantly get invited back because you do it really well. I mean, the media is just like any of us. If we can make it easy for them, if we can give them good TV, a good article, a good quote, that's who they're going to call because that's the easy, oh, let me call Christina. We'll be done in two minutes and this is great. Or she can come in and do a segment. We know it's going to be good. We don't have to hound her, prep her, or do whatever. You know, I was just on last week and it was amazing. It was like I had a four minute segment launching my podcast on TV, which was great. I mean, how many people would love to do that? And it's doable and you just know how. Yep. Yeah, that's true. That's why we align so well together, right? Because we help to build the brand that helps that person to portray what they want to portray to people. So once that brand is built, Christina looks at it and says, okay, now that I know who you are, who you serve, how you serve them, how it makes their life better, all of that kind of stuff. Here's the media that we need to be on. Here's the story you need to, or the way that you need to pitch your story. And that's why those two work so well together. Yeah. So like if somebody has a great product or service or their brand has already been built by Brandface and they just need people to learn about it, what's a good first step for them to take? Yeah, I would say local is the easiest thing you could do. Unless you're in New York City, I'm sorry if you're listening from New York. It's the number one market. It's the most competitive market there is. But you can still get on. But if you are in New York, I would try some of your Connecticut, you know, New Jersey, some of the more suburban areas. But start local. They love Local media loves to highlight local success stories, but you've got to build your story around something that's relevant. Don't think of it as a sales pitch to say, oh, we all want an expose on 60 Minutes. And in my (laughs) 11 years, I just had my very first client who I really think would be good on 60 Minutes to be all about him. That's very rare. Usually what we want to do is pitch ourselves as the expert. What can we talk about? What's happening in the news where we position ourselves as the expert in that space, and then you'll reap all the benefits. So they're not going to say, you know, oh, Christina Day is PR strategist, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's not about that, but it's me. And I've been interviewed, for example, when Ellen had a lot of the problems that, that the Kelly Clarkson show is having right now, you know, kind of like, what does that do for her PR, her image, her brand? So that's me being an expert in my space, but not talking about me, me, me. So build stories around things that are newsworthy, what's happening in the world right now that you can align yourself with and be that expert for your local media. Mm -hmm. Getting out part of the conversation, I guess, is like what you're saying. So like, I remember when we were just talking about our charity B operation. And I remember back when, I think it was last summer that Delta lost like a bunch of bees. Like it was just, and I hit you up and I'm like, what do we need to do here? And you're like, position yourself as the authority and then enter the conversation, right? Right. You might say, hey, I'm a beekeeper here. I understand what, you know, I've got some insight to this. And do you treat it like social media? Do you just jump, try to offer your conversation and your expertise to the local journalists? Is that how you do it? Jump right in. My favorite story is, you all remember one of the biggest, you know, credit card fraud things was Target on Black Friday. The data had been stolen. And that was kind of the first time it happened. And I had shopped at Target that day. And I remember the four o'clock news came on and it was a business coach. And I was like, why do they have a business coach on talking about, you know, the impact to Target? And then it hit me. I'm like, that woman was so smart. She picked up the phone. She said, I'm a business coach. I know you need a story right away. This just broke. I can be in studio at four o'clock and we'll talk about it. By the time the later news programs came on, they had IT people and cloud people talking about that. But I'm positive that's what happened. So when something breaking news, pick up the phone and call the newsroom. Hey, I'm an expert in this. This is what I do. This is what I can talk about. We can talk about X, Y, and Z. I can be there for your four o'clock, your five o'clock, whatever that is. Would you be interested? And then they're going to check you out. So that's where the brand piece piece comes in because you've got to have the credibility, for example, to be on TV. If they're going to put you out there, they've got to know you're good. So by building a brand, building a great website, having content out there that they put your name into Google and it's check, check, check. Oh, beautiful. Come on in. Mm -hmm. That's so true. And I remember you telling me a long time ago, develop the relationships with the journalists if you can. You know, follow them on Twitter, make comments about their stuff. So I guess, you know, if you could share with us, what are some do's and don'ts of connecting with journalists online or any other way? Because a lot of people think, okay, I've got this story, but I may not be able to get to that person. I might get the gatekeeper. Can you tell me some of those things? 
Yeah, you can get to them. Trust me on this. You want to find where they're active. Don't go to their personal Facebook page if you're not friends with them. But here's what's really cool. Like I've built so many relationships with the journalists that I've worked with that we're now friends on Facebook. I text them. Matter of fact, I texted one today and said, hey, are you going to be at this event tomorrow night? So you can build these relationships. But I would start on LinkedIn and Twitter because it's more generic, let's say more. It's not as personal as a Facebook is or an Instagram is. And depending on what they're doing on the different platforms, you know, you don't you don't want to jump in on their personal space like, oh, so, you know, oh, your daughter looks so cute on Easter Sunday when you don't know them. Like that's great. That's what a create them. But sticking to wherever they're active, LinkedIn or Twitter is really, you know, where I go, what I do and see what they're talking about and insert yourself in their conversation. The editor of Entrepreneur Magazine very recently got super active on LinkedIn. I comment on his stuff every day. Guess what? He comments back. So let's say I have a story for him. He's going to recognize my name that I've been engaging with him. I've been sharing his work and I'm not doing it to get in with him. Obviously, I'm an entrepreneur and I follow Entrepreneur Magazine. It's you know, something that I do. Be authentic in what you do. But I have many clients who've done this. I have a client, she had one show she wanted to be on. It's on Fox. It was a Charles Payne show. And I told her, this is going to take a while. I mean, this is national news. And she kept, she commented, she shared, she stayed, and she's now a regular on the show. Yes. It seems like it's just like anything else. The relationships were really where the key is. And do you think that people have a block at even starting to do stuff like this because they don't feel authentic? You know what I mean? Like, for instance, I could go down to the YMCA tonight or sometime this week when they're having a pickup basketball game. And I've never been to that pickup basketball game. And I haven't played basketball in 10 years. So I'm going to be the worst guy out there. I'm going to be the fattest guy out there. I'm going to be the slowest guy out there. I'm going to be the most winded guy out there. And nobody knows me, right? <laughs> but if I go out there within about a month or so or two months, they might pass me the ball every now and then, right? Is, I mean, isn't it really sort of like this? Because i dealing with this in the real estate business with agents. I think people feel like, well, isn't entering the conversation not authentic? And I think there's this block where they don't realize we're all human they don't know which door to open. Yeah, you know, or just to start it. Just right. Yeah, that's I mean, the key. It's it's awkward in the start, and they feel like, well, I'm not being authentic because I feel awkward. But really, yeah, you're being authentic. You want to get in this space, start yeah. getting into this space, right? And no, the first time might not be great. I still remember when I first pitched, I literally just sent my pitching following what I practiced, and I called NBC, and I'm like, um, I just, um, I just um, sent this pitch in, um, and it was, of course, I didn't get on. <laughs> but now I'm like, hey, I just sent this great pitch. It'd be so good for your audience. You know, I know so many people who watch your channel, and you just talked about this story. I think this is such a great follow up. It just changed when you go in with that confidence, and it takes a little while. You're not going to have it the first time, but if you just believe in your gift and what you have to offer, and look at it as something you're going to provide that audience that's going to be valuable. And I always say, if you can just touch one person, you've yeah. done your job. Like that's all that matters. If one person listens to it or watches it. So going into it with that mindset and then the confidence of you're good at what you do. There's a reason you are where you are. You're good at that. So it's okay to be good at that. It's okay to tell the world you're good at it and offer your expertise. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what we're so passionate about on this side is helping people unveil that inner star because we deal with that a lot, Christina. I'm sure you do a lot of counseling on your end that you are worth it. You're wonderful. You can, yeah. you know, we do it on our end too. And it's amazing how many very accomplished people still feel that trepidation when it comes to really putting themselves out there. And it's also amazing how we forget that one person theory. Social media, think about as talking to one person, right? Rather than so many. But we all get caught up in these vanity metrics. Sure. And we feel like we have to have 100,000 followers or, you know, 50,000 likes or all of those things. And it really isn't that way. Even with somebody like you who's gotten thousands of clients, really good media coverage, even you would probably say it's not about the vanity metrics. Oh, and we know that now. We know. I mean, there have been so many studies done on people who had a million followers on Instagram and, you know, for example, partnered with a t-shirt company and couldn't sell one t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happens You've all the time. It. We see it all the time. 
Yeah, I would rather work with somebody who had a thousand followers that are engaged and talking and paying attention. That's yeah. going to get you so much more. I do think people are realizing that the numbers don't matter like they did. It's like yeah. who's listening and who's paying attention. Yeah, that is so true. That's the greatest lesson. And we've had three or four takeaways here just in the last couple of minutes about that. So I hope that we've encouraged, like you said, at least one listener to just get past that and then approach this like you are helpful to somebody. You do have information to give. And yeah, they may not say anything. They may not respond to you, but that doesn't mean that you stop, right? You know, right. again, basketball analogy, you know, you don't just take one shot in a game and the best of the players are only 66% good at the field. So, you know. Right. Keep exactly. shooting. Right? Sure. You have to keep doing it, as with anything. And you get better the more you do it. Right. So true. Well, this is actually a great segue into the next topic, which is your podcast, Christina. So you excited. have a new podcast out. Yeah. Now tell us about it. Yeah. So I work with so many amazing women who are in their 50s. And I realized, wow, we have a lot of really cool stuff that we can share with people. We have been through a lot. You talked about the ups and downs that we've gone through in the last 11 years. And I was kind of toying with this podcast. And then that whole thing happened. And I won't even say his name, but the CNN anchor who basically said we're past our prime at this age was just not but a fire in me, like a fire in me. And yes, yeah, so I launched the podcast. We just started. I mean, I've recorded a lot of them, but I'm bringing on just amazing women who are either in this age group and many of them are second and third chapters. Um, my inaugural episode was the former executive producer of the Today Show. And she's amazing talking about before, during, and now after what she's doing. And she was an older mom and she's like, you know, I don't, my kids are teenagers. Like I, it was time to be home and that's okay. And then just people with advice for women our age, you know, fitness, health, and I don't want to say diet, nutrition. What do we do? Memory. Like, what can we do? I didn't realize that actually really prevent dementia and Alzheimer's or certain things you can do every day. And I'll have her back on again. She's like preeminent. She's an RN, but also a PhD. And she's like the expert on dementia and Alzheimer's. So it's just fascinating, like these amazing women and women breaking glass ceilings. And now we're sharing our stories and now we're doing the things we love. Like this podcast brings me so much joy. So being able to have the next chapter and just share it with people. Oh, yeah, that's good. I love it. And if it's not the women themselves you're talking to in these, it can be like if you're talking about Alzheimer's and dementia, you may not have that at 55, 60, 65, right? But you may have a parent who does or a mm -hmm. loved one who does. And it seems like that is so prevalent. We spent this last Mother's Day weekend with both our moms, actually. We took them to the river and we had a really nice long weekend together. We had a blast, a blast. But my mom has some health issues and we were talking about that. It's like, okay, you know, what as influencers, as adult children and influencers in their lives, you know, what can we do to continue to help them maintain the health that they have or improve the health that they have? And those issues, I mean, I realize health is just one of many, many topics that you can cover, but we spent an entire weekend almost talking talking about that one topic. This is so important because I do truly believe as somebody who's in that range, right? I know that my life is not over, CNN. Yeah, <laughs> not right. <laughs> it's not over. In yeah. fact, in many ways, it's just beginning to be the most important part of my life. Well, think of how much you know now. And this is the greatest quote I heard. And people are like, you need to start making memes about this. Forbes magazine said we're like teenagers with money. Because <laughs> we're active, we're healthy. That's great. So it's like, wow, I still have a good 30 years of really fun time. And now I can afford to do stuff. <laughs> it's yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Teenagers with money. I'm I not going to forget that, that one. Right? Yeah, okay. I love it. <laughs> well, what's one piece of advice that you would give people about personal branding? Isn't that a good question? Consistency. So that people know it's you and it doesn't have to be a color or a font, but that helps. Like pink is just kind of become my standard. I worked with a client and we just did a little shift where I'm like, let's just get your blue in everything that you do. And it's exploded because they're identifiable and they're this kind of glance. At a glance, right. Mm -hmm. And it's a title and escrow company. So you're like, oh, boring. And we're doing really fun stuff that nobody expects them to do. Mm -hmm. So 
being bold. In bold in what you do and just making sure people know what you do. Be really clear in your messaging. You know, when you, a confused mind never buys. So if you're not really clear on who you serve and what you do and what pain you solve, you're going to confuse people. Mm -hmm. You are speaking our language. I know. <laughs> yeah. As Michael says, you can't calculate the cost of confusion. Yeah, that's super hard. Stop chewing your tracks. You know, if, like you said, a confused mind never buys. Confused people don't do anything. They squat. You know, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, so true. You got to help them along a little bit. Sometimes one inch at a time. Yeah. <laughs> well, Christina, we were talking about a trip you're about to take coming up, but this falls right into line with a question that we ask every guest, and that's if our listeners have the freedom to visit anywhere in the world, where would you recommend they visit and why? Okay, we just got back from Tuscany, and I had been to Italy before. I'd been to the cities. I had never been to Tuscany. Phenomenal. So Siena was the coolest city, and there's a whole history. It's actually a Netflix documentary about them, about a horse race that they do there and neighborhoods. And you take this tour. I can't even explain it. It's like 17 neighborhoods and they're all an animal. And you basically, when you sign up to be that animal, you're that animal for life. And these people are passionate about it. Like they, they're they blessing their horses in the church. And it's like nothing you've ever seen before. It's the coolest wow. thing. Oh, you've got to Google it. It's so cool. But yes, Tuscany. So all these little towns and we felt like we were on a movie set every day and the food and the wine and the people. And it was unbelievable. I can't wait to go back. Oh, that sounds fascinating. Well, tell everybody where you're headed in the next couple of weeks. I, Cause I haven't been there. So I can't say about that yet. Right? I, I know. know. I know. Uh, we are going to Kenya and Tanzania on a safari. I've always wanted to do that. Oh yeah. It's on our top five yeah. list. Yeah. Okay. And I wanted to see the big animals and my son wanted to see the herd migration. So we timed it so we could do both. I think she's going to be a trip of a lifetime. Oh, my. Oh, no doubt. I was just about to use those words. I have this dream, too. Michael and I have talked about that. Like, we love tree houses. I do, right? And we went to Dominican Republic a few years ago and stayed in a tree house village. And it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. But if we were in Africa, if you stayed in the tree house, you might just wake up and see a giraffe's head right in your window. Hello? <laughs> 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 That's what my husband said. We took our kids to Disney years ago. And when you stay at Animal Kingdom, you have the animals out there. And he's like, do we really need to go all the way to Africa? Can't we just go back to Disney? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be Not cheaper, quite. Smith, right? Yeah. <laughs> you want to be and there's a giraffe yeah. right there. But. Exactly. I've got probably at least three friends that have done that. So one of them actually did it a month in a safari. And they all rave about it. Like nobody's come back and said, I wish I hadn't have done it. Like nobody. Yeah. Yeah. That I was just like, I was just yeah. And then I used to have a couple that worked in our office. They transferred down to Florida, but she was from uh, South Africa and he was from here in Atlanta, Georgia. And they married and they went every year because her family was right there. Yeah. It was a bit, you know, and he'd bring back pictures of the lions and they would go out at night and look for them. It was fantastic, like amazing pictures. So, yeah, I can't wait. It's on our list. Exactly. Well, Christina, tell everybody what is the best way to get in touch with you, to learn more about you, what you can do for them after they build their personal brand. Yeah, thank you. I'm ChristinaDaves.com. Everything is there. So I work with people on PR. Companies need, I've been doing, this is a new thing, kind of cool, is red carpet for when you have big events, like your corporation does an event and you're honoring your employees and VIP. So there's all kinds of ways I can work with people to help whether it's one person or a company, get more visible. Love I love that. it. I love it too, Christina. And congratulations on your new podcast. Give everybody the name of it one more time. Yeah. Living Ageless and Bold. And that's all on the website too. So where all your podcasts are, YouTube, anywhere you can listen to it. Thank you, Christina, for sharing your time with us again. It's lovely to see you as always. See you. Thanks. Brought to you by BrandFace, the only comprehensive personal brand building system across the globe.